sharing a lot about myself in this video that I actually just found out myself not too long ago. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we focus on hair care and skin care. Today I am so excited to bring this video to you all because I'm actually going to be sharing a lot of information with you all that I just found out about myself. So if you have seen my previous video, then you know that I sent my DNA in so I could get an ancestry and health report from 23andMe. Um, that video goes through the steps that it took to collect the DNA and to also mail it out. So if you have not seen that already, you should go ahead and check that out. It was actually a lot different than I expected. I did not realize I would have to actually continuously spit into a tube to collect the DNA. So that one is definitely interesting and you should check that out before you watch this video. But today I am going to go through these actual results. So um, before I get into that, I do want to share why I decided to take this test. And this comes all the way back from my childhood. Um, I have always been asked, what are you and where are you from? And although I have always hated the what are you question, I've always wanted to be able to answer it better than I could in the past. So I always knew that, of course, I am black, um, I have Italian in me, and I have Irish in me, but I didn't know how much Italian and Irish I had in me. I didn't know if it was even enough to actually claim. And um, then on the black side, I have no idea where my family is actually from on that side beyond Ohio and Alabama. So I really wanted to dig into that side to understand where in Africa my family was from. Um, another reason I decided to take this test is because I recently went to South Africa and I got to talk to a lot of locals there. And I was surprised, I don't know why I was surprised, it makes complete sense, but they were able to track where their family was from, from generations to generations. So um, they would ask us questions as to, uh, just to figure out where our family was from and we couldn't answer it. And they were actually surprised by that as well. So that definitely made me even more curious and, um, excited to get my results from 23andMe. So let's go ahead and get into these results because I can't wait to share this with you all. So as I sign into 23andMe, I um, then go to the Ancestry Report and I am given an overview of what I am made of. So it gives you the top three areas you come from and I was already surprised by this part of the report, even though it has not gone into great detail yet. So um, the top three for me is number one being Nigerian at 32.2%, which my uncle got his report back a couple weeks ago and he had Nigerian in him as well, but I did not expect to have um, Nigerian at the top of my list. And I'm really excited about that and I can't wait to learn more about Nigeria and about the culture and tradition and uh, everything else that I'm going to learn within this ancestry composition. So the, uh, the second piece is British and Irish, which is 23.3%. And I was surprised about that because Italian comes at 11.5%. And I always thought that I was more Italian than Irish. And I had no idea that I had British in me. So already learning a lot about myself. And then you can go into greater detail because obviously those percentages don't add up to 100%. So it then breaks it down and shows you those smaller percentages from the sub-Saharan sub -Saharan African side and European side. Um, so the sub-Saharan African side makes up about 60% of my ancestry composition. Again, the largest being Nigerian and um, that is under the West African side, which makes up 52.4%. So really the largest portion of that is West African. 
which includes Nigerian in those other small percentages you see here. And then we have the European side, which is about 40%. And a lot of that comes from the Northwest European section, which is British and Irish. And then the Southern European is where the Italian comes in. Then they have the 1% of East Asian and Native American, which is cool to know, but uh, it's such a small percent. So after looking through that, then I went over to the health and traits section because I really wanted to learn what kind of diseases I was at risk for. And when I clicked in, there were four diseases that I was at an increased risk or had a variant detected for, um, including the uh, age-related macular degeneration disease, uh, late onset Alzheimer's disease, the G6PD deficiency, and celiac di disease. So a lot of this makes sense because um, Alzheimer's does run in my family. Um, I have had uh, digestion problems in the past and I still do. So the, uh, so is that the, so no, that's not. Yeah, the celiac disease would explain that. And um, I actually just learned that the age-related macular degeneration, degeneration disease is something that runs in my family as well. So I was initially surprised by that, but my grandmother explained that my grandfather actually had either the same or similar disease to this. So um, the one thing that I was happy to find out is that I don't have Parkinson's disease traced in my DNA and um, type two diabetes didn't really show up. And those were two other diseases that I was worried about, but even though it is scary to find out what you may be at risk at for the future, it's good to know because there may be things that you can do now to prevent these diseases, um, decrease the impact of them, or just prepare if you can't um, reduce the likelihood of them occurring. So I am really glad that I decided to do that. And then it also goes into a carrier status. So it tells you what diseases or illnesses you can pass on to your children. And luckily everything they tested, nothing was detected for me. So that is good for my children's sake. Um, then this is what I found interesting is the wellness section. So it is unlikely that I am going to flush red when I drink alcohol and less likely to consume caffeine, which is really accurate. I really don't drink caffeine. Um, if I do, it's tea, it has low caffeine in it and I don't do it very often. Deep sleep, I am less likely to be a deep sleeper. Definitely true. Uh, genetic weight, so I forget what this is. This doesn't mean your weight will definitely be average while your genes don't appear to be strongly influencing your weight in either direction. So this says since I'm 5'2 and 28, I should be 150 pounds. I am nowhere near that. Lactose intolerant, it says likely intolerant, which is 100% accurate. Um, muscle composition, so it says the composition I have is common to elite power athletes. I found that hilarious because I am not that athletic. Um, saturated fat and weight, likely to weigh more on a high saturated fat diet. I, maybe, maybe this is something that will come in the future, but I can eat anything and not gain weight. I have tried to gain weight by eating tons of food, tons of food that are high in saturated fats, and I actually lost weight. So I don't know if that is something that's accurate or if it's just not accurate yet. Um, sleep movement, likely 
average or less movement. I don't think I move that much, but I know whenever I fall asleep, I wake up in a different position. So I move a little bit. Uh, and then the other thing that I found very interesting here is the traits section. So this goes through physical features, taste and smell, weird and wonderful. Um, physical features, they go into cheek dimples, 56% chance you do not have dimples. I do not have dimples. Um, cleft chin, 91% chance you do not have a cleft chin, that is accurate. Dandruff, 58% chance you have dandruff. I did have dandruff for a long time and it's something that I have to really work hard to prevent. So that is accurate. Earlobe types, 77% chance you have detached earlobes, which I do. 91% uh, chance you have wet, sticky ears. As disgusting as that is, that is accurate as well. Um, eye color, 91% chance of dark brown eyes. I do not know if my eyes could be any darker brown, so that is accurate. 69% chance your ring finger is longer than your index finger. They are actually the same size. So it depends, like, I can make one look longer than the other, but they are the same size. Freckles, 21% chance you have few, if any, freckles. I have a few freckles, I think more on this side. I can't remember which side, but one side definitely has more freckles than the other. Hair photo bleaching, 58% chance you experience hair photo bleaching. That is when your hair gets lighter because of sunlight, and that is completely accurate. Hair texture, 34% chance of slightly wavy hair. My hair is very curly, so that's not as accurate. At least they didn't say straight. Um, light or dark hair, 67% chance of dark hair, dark brown hair, that is accurate. Newborn hair, 52% chance you had little or no hair at birth, that is accurate. I apparently had just enough hair to put one tiny bow in and that was it. So red hair, 95% chance you do not have red hair. I have a couple strands here and there, but I cannot say that I have red hair. Skin pigmentation, 59% chance of light brown skin. Yep, accurate. Stretch marks, 58% chance you have stretch marks. I have always had a stretch mark going from one side of my knee to the other side and then um, a couple of my thighs which I think are super cute so that is a hundred percent accurate um, toe length ratio 61% chance you have a longer big toe so embarrassingly enough my second toe is longer than my big toe. Um, unibrow, 47% chance you have a little bit of a unibrow. I'm very hairy, so yeah, there's, there's a couple pieces of hair that are in between my eyebrow, I'll admit that. Widow's peak, 74% chance you have a widow's peak. I do actually have a widow's peak. I used to think it was like my little Superman curl that would come in the middle of my head, but I think it has grown out now. But uh, I, it was a love-hate relationship with that thing. So very quickly, the taste and smell, asparagus odor detection, likely can't smell. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if I've ever smelled uh, asparagus, but I can tell you that I don't know what it smells like, so it could be accurate. Uh, bitter taste, likely can taste. I hate bitterness, so yes. Cilantro taste aversion. 
So basically this means I probably don't like cilantro and I don't care for it too much. It's not something that I would crave or ask for anything. A lot of times I do ask to leave the cilantro off of my tacos, so I guess so. Ice cream flavor preference. I prefer vanilla over ice chocolate ice cream. Yes, I hate chocolate ice cream. Sweet versus salty. Likely prefers salty. So um, I have a huge sweet tooth. I love both sweet and salty, but I have to go with sweet over salty any day. Weird and wonderful. Ability to match musical pitch. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, it could be. They said I have, there's a 50-50% chance. I played piano. Um, I don't know how good I was at piano, but uh, I can't tell you if that's accurate or not. Bunions. More likely than average to have a bunion. I am proud to say that I do not have a bunion. Um, fear of heights. More likely than average to be afraid of heights. I think it's pretty average for me. I don't think I'm extremely afraid of heights or anything like that. Fear of public speaking, about 50-50 chance of having a fear of public speaking. I hate public speaking, so 100% chance that I fear and hate it. Um, flat feet, more likely than average to have flat feet. Yes, 100% accurate. Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair. My hair is not very thick, so that is accurate. Um, like, less likely to hate chewing sounds. I don't really, yeah, I don't think that really bothers me. So accurate. Mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten more often than others. I have been telling people for years that mosquitoes love me and this proves it. My blood is definitely sweet. Mosquitoes definitely do bite me more often than others. Um, motion sickness, less likely to experience motion sickness. Um, I don't really get motion sickness that often, so that is accurate. Sneeze reflex. So that means that um, I think the sun makes you sneeze or something like that. Yes. And this says that it is unlikely that I have this, which is 100% right. And wake up time, likely to wake up around 8.39. So it really just depends on my actual work schedule. And since I typically start working around 8.30, 9 o'clock, I have been waking up earlier than that. So I just naturally wake up earlier than 8.30, but I love to sleep in when I can. So that's probably not that accurate. That completes the entire report. I hope you enjoyed learning more about me. I definitely enjoyed learning more about myself. If you do plan to take this test, please let me know in the comments. Also, go ahead and send me a DM to my Instagram, ashylauren365. I um, will also link to it in the description box because I have a 30% coupon if you do want to use 23andMe for a DNA test, and I would be happy to share the coupon code with you. I do only have two, so make sure that you uh, DM me as soon as possible, and I will get that over to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you next time.